Today, as we enter an age of technology that our forefathers couldn't dream of, an unprecedented new threat has the potential to impact our privacy, our national security, and the integrity of the democratic process. Images generated by artificial intelligence, so-called deep fakes, are being used to harm or manipulate people all over the nation. We need new ideas, new technology, and the support of media forensics experts to solve one of the biggest challenges of our time. Defects is eroding our national security, public safety, and also fundamentally uh, causing damages to the very foundation of our democracy. Deepfakes can also be used for defamation, discreditation of certain individuals. The kind of emotional and psychological stress this kind of falsified media can cause to them. If we slow down, pause, and say, is this real? And then start to do cross-validation, fact-checking, then many of the deepfakes can be easily debunked. The Media Forensics Lab at UB was established in year 2020, and we currently have one postdoc, six PhD students, one master's student, and one undergrad student working in the lab. The current research focus of the lab stays mostly on detection of deepfakes and also some preemptive, proactive measures that will help the users to avoid becoming victims of deepfakes. When we funded it, we said, fine, you do your scholarly work, you go and publish papers in the top journals and get the citations and get the accolades in the uh, academic world. But let us also be a point of service. We supported hiring some students and scientists and gave them funds for setting up a mini lab within the overall forensics lab where they could receive images and media from various sources and they could provide authentication with some confidence. This lab is playing a leadership role not only in our school but now at the university to bring in all these scholars from very different disciplines to get at all the different dimensions of this issue from a holistic perspective. A deepfake image manipulation can be generally classified into two types, the full synthesis and the local manipulation. To detect deepfake images, we have explored different solutions. Uh, for example, our recent work using inconsistencies in the mouse regions to expose the lip-syncing deepfake videos. We also tried different data-driven methods using deep learning models to automatically extract uh, features to distinguish between real and uh, fake images and videos. This demo shows the whole process of our recent lip-syncing detectors. It will first use facial landmarks to match and extract mouse frames with similar poses from the successive frames and non-successive frames across the whole video. Then the model will output a prediction score uh, indicating the probability of the input being real or fake. In this category, we will also have um, WaveGrad as a vocoder. Audio defect manipulations including voice coloning and another technique we have is uh, voice conversion. Third one will be speech synthesized. And finally, we have the emotion transfer. For our algorithm, we focus on the speech synthesis. We are going to see four audio samples. Actually, it is the speech synthesized sample which used the voice coloning and the test of speech in it. And then we're gonna play the demo audio samples. Each of them we're gonna show waveform and the spectrogram of it. Then I will plot it in our uh, detection algorithm. Uh, I will show the results about how many percentage was real and how many percentage was fake and which vocoder it was using. Deepfake meter is an open platform for deepfake detection tools. What we do here is we provide to ordinary users an online web-based interface. It's completely free, it's open source. What we're in the process now is upgrading the system to incorporate more recent analysis modules and the improved overall user interface. One of the intended long-term impact of this work, Deepfake Meter, is to make the deepfake detection tools more accessible to the users. 
So the more users start to use this, we will get more defects exposed on social media. It will also have this intimidating effect to potential defect makers because their defects can be exposed. That will deter them from making defects and spreading them in the first place. Well, given the digital age that we're all part of, everyone is challenging the authenticity of media every day. And so when we can't trust our media, it starts to erode our communities and our societies. And so the scholarly work that this lab is doing is not only distinguished from a scholarly perspective, but it's critically important for our world. Even though the problem is caused by the rise of AI technology, we can use the same technology to fight back its negative impact. And that's exactly what we're doing here. Well, it's very urgent, particularly for this year. In the U.S., we have major elections coming later this year, but also more than half of the population on Earth will have elections this year. So I think the political implications of disinformation with the help of defects will have strong impact. So I think it becomes a very important service that we want to make available. Come talk with us in person or virtually. We always welcome discussion with stakeholders, people working in the trench, fighting disinformation and defects.